All set? Um, all right, so today we're gonna to be going through training on these two uh, PVI quick draw water units. Um, first, I'll talk about normal operation of them. Uh, they, use, they use boiler water to heat domestic water. Um, this is done through this heat exchanger that you can see here, and this uh, boiler water control valve. So um, the units are currently set to 140 degrees. When they drop to 135 degrees, a call for heat is initiated. When that happens, this, this three-way valve will open up to allow boiler water to flow through the heat exchanger, and this will happen until uh, the set point is met at 140, at which time this valve will then close and it will not open again until there's another call for heat. Um, basically, all this, this valve just opens, allows the boiler water to flow through the heat exchanger, and uh, that's, that's your heat source. So you use a few different um, controls to accomplish this. Um, the main control, you have your temp track um, controller. This contains uh, the parameter ST1. ST1 is your primary set point. On these heaters, they are set to 140 degrees. So if you press set, ST1, I'm sorry, they're set to 145 right now. This heater, you have ST1, 145. If you need to change that, you press the set button. The value will blink. Use the arrows to dial it to where you want it to be and press set one more time just to hold, just to uh, save your change. And after 30 seconds, the control will automatically time out and go back to its default display. Um, so this, this control is, is what, this, this is your primary temperature controller. Um, in here you have a secondary temperature controller. They call it the upper operating control. This is meant to be set 10 degrees higher than the set point and it is there um, connected to a probe at a higher point in the tank and it is there simply just to make sure that as the water heater is heating water here where the heat exchanger is that you are not creating water that is too hot up top. So it's like, it's a, uh, it acts as an automatic resetting high limit. Um, it will limit the temperature at the top of the tank to whatever uh, temperature you set the dial to. Uh, and again, that should be 10 degrees higher than the operating set point. Um, that, that, is, that covers it as far as what controls the operation of, of, of this water heater. So, so to summarize, you have your boiler water control valve opening up, allowing hot water to flow through the heat exchanger. This happens until the set point is met, at which time this valve will close. And um, you just need to, uh, if you're going to make any changes to your primary set point, you just need to consider the upper operating temperature and set that 10 degrees higher than your set point. Um, We'll go into safeties. There's two main uh, safety controls on these heaters. Uh, one is the manual reset high limit. Uh, that is up here to the left. It's, it's got a sticker on it that says high limit. Uh, they're typically set at 200 degrees. That's how they come from the factory. That's how this one is. If uh, there's any type of malfunction of, um, of, of, of any of the controls or components that will cause this water heater to overheat the water in the tank, um, then this control will trip. It's a manual reset type, so it will not allow the water heater to operate again until someone comes in and presses this button. It's a green button there. If you Right now, there's no resistance on the button. It doesn't click because the control is not tripped. If it is tripped, you'll press this button, you'll get a click, and uh, the control will reset. If you have to reset this control at any time, I would recommend calling for service to have someone look at the heater because if that control trips, it's a sign that something is, uh, you know, either didn't operate properly or is not operating properly constantly. Um, the other safety in addition to the manual reset high limit is the low order cutoff control. You'll see that green circuit board that's in the con uh, control panel just behind the high limit. And uh, hopefully on the camera you can see there's a red LED light on, on that board. That red LED light being present tells me that this control is sensing water and is satisfied and is not, not preventing operation of the water heater. Um, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to test it. There's two buttons on the side. One is ELWCO, that's electronic low order cutoff reset, electronic low order cutoff test. If I wanna test the function of this control, I will hold that button down. While holding it down, keep an eye on the control silence the alarm here. As you can see, now you're in a low water condition where the water heater will not operate to prevent a dry fire or damage to the heat exchanger or anything else. So 
so now my red LED light is not on in there. So now I've confirmed that this low water cutoff uh, does function and that it does stop operation of the water heater as it should. Um, if you walk into this room and th that light is off and the water heater is not working, you can always try the reset. That reset is just an attempt to reset that control. In this case, that LED light comes back on and the heater uh, continues to, uh, to operate, telling me that that control is now reset and the heater is back in normal operation. Um, that, that circuit board is connected to a, a, probe, a probe, a probe that is threaded into the water side of the tank. If that probe should become um, uh, fouled up or encapsulated in, in uh, lime scale or any other type of sediment, uh, that could cause the control to not to not work. Uh, it could either not work by constantly showing low water or it could not work by never um, stopping operation of the heater, not recognizing that the water level has failed. So I would always try that uh, try that test and reset function um, at, at least uh, at least annually that should that should be tested. Um, in addition, this high limit control should be tested annually. And these controls for accuracy uh, should be tested um, annually. Uh, you're also going to want to make sure that these temperature displays are, are accurate. Um, this red number is coming off a sensor that's at the top of the tank. This yellow number is coming off a sensor that's at the middle of the tank. It's just telling you the temperature at two different points in the tank. Um, this number right here, 139, is telling us the temperature of water that's currently leaving the tank. And if you look at that temperature gauge on the pipe, they match up perfectly. That's one way to um, kind of cross-check these things and, and make sure that they're accurate and that they're giving you good information. Uh, so let's talk about maintenance now. Um, annually, you're gonna wanna check the safeties like we just discussed. Annually, you're gonna wanna test the low water cutoff you're going to want to test the manual reset high limit. You're going to want to test the upper operating control. This control uh, clicks when when uh, when it opens and closes. So if you touch this dial, you'll you'll hear you'll hear the control open and close, and that should happen when the indicator is on the dial um, at the temperature that's in the tank. You'll be able to tell whether that's accurate or it's inaccurate based on when it opens and closes. See, so uh, at, at least monthly, if not more often, you should check these things for accuracy like I just touched on. Um, you should get used to what these numbers are um, on, these, on these gauges. This is telling you the water pressure coming into the heat exchanger, the water temperature of the boiler water coming into the heat exchanger. Um, here is the temperature of the water leaving the heat exchanger and the pressure of the water leaving the heat exchanger as it goes back to the source. Um, you're going to want to take, take note of what these numbers are and make sure that these gauges are accurate and that they haven't failed and that they're still uh, providing you with good and useful information. Um, and uh, same thing goes for those two numbers on the heater. You can easily check those like I, like I touched on uh, earlier. You look at the number that is shown, uh, shown on the display and then look at the gauge that's on the outlet hot water piping and those numbers right now match perfectly and they always should. Um, as required, uh, flushing and cleaning of the inside of the tank as well as the heat exchanger is done on an as needed basis and whether or not this is needed depends on the quality of the water at the site in addition to how much hot water is being used at the site. The more hot water you use, the more fresh water gets introduced to the tank, the more lime and sediment and things are left behind um, and that affects you know, the cleanliness and the, the efficiency of the heater. Uh, the best way, you'll, if, if you're having an issue with this and you need to clean those, you would look for poor performance. Um, if this water heater over time, um, you know, begins to struggle, struggle, uh, struggle more and more with making temperature or eventually is not capable of reaching temperature anymore, you should call for service to troubleshoot and rule out other issues. Um, but at that time, if there are no other issues, it may become necessary to flush out the inside of the tank. Um, and, and clean either the inside of the tank or the heat exchanger, um, which can be done by a service company um, 
and uh, like I said, you'll you'll get you'll get symptoms of that as far as the water heater not performing well, uh, a low loss of temperature across the heat exchanger from the supply to the return, um, and and basic and, and sim symptoms like that poor performance. Um, annually, the uh, temperature and pressure relief valve should be tested. Um, so this one's going to be this one's a little easier to read. So this, uh, this relief valve is set to, uh, it will open and discharge water at either 150 PSI or 210 degrees. Um, they're, they're a very important safety. They can never be impeded or, or plugged or clogged or anything like that. And um, a, a very easy way to, to test them is annually. You'll gently lift up on this lever. You'll hear water begin to come out and you'll get some discharge out of the pipe on the floor. You release the lever and it should stop. It's very important that water comes out of that, out of that drain when you lift the lever and it's also very important that water stops coming out of that drain as soon as you release the lever. If you're not able to get water to discharge out of that drain by lifting the lever, the relief valve needs to be replaced. If the water does not stop coming out of that drain after you let go of the lever, the relief valve needs to be replaced. Uh, either of those instances, you should call for service. Um, and then we'll talk about the, 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 flushing, the flushing of the tank. So if you're at a point where the water heater is performing poorly um, and other, other causes, control issues, control failures have been ruled out, you'll want to try to flush the tank. Um, an initial way that you can try to do this is to walk up and underneath each heat exchanger you'll see um, a, 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 a pressure gauge followed by a manual ball valve. Uh, you open that valve, that is your tank drain. You'll want to open that drain uh, for about 10 seconds and pay, take note of the water coming out. If the water coming out is dirty, you should repeat until that water clears up. If that water does not come out dirty and you are having issues with a dirty tank, then you may need to go further as far as the flushing procedure. Um, that would include isolating the tank, draining the tank, isolating meaning shutting off the cold water, so shutting off power to the tank first, then shutting off the cold water supply, shutting off the hot water supply. You would drain the tank 100% and then introduce cold water into the empty tank. This will hit the sides and bottom of the tank, stirring up the sediment. Um, at that time, you can open the drain for about 10 seconds until water stops. You'll get dirty water out of there if there is sediment in the tank and you would repeat until you get clean water. Uh, that would be a flushing procedure, which would only be done um, on an as-needed basis. Um, these, the, these maintenance procedures are located in the back of the uh, operating and maintenance manual for these heaters. Uh, there's a section on maintenance and it breaks it down um, annually, monthly, um, as needed, and uh, that's always something that you guys can reference as a reminder. Um, with that being said, that, that covers operation of, the, of these heaters uh, pretty well, um, and I would just do, uh, uh, I, I, would, I would regularly check these heaters, check the numbers on these gauges, um, and make sure you don't have any alarms, make sure you have a normal uh, default setting showing you your two temperatures. And um, if, you, if there's any concerns, any control, um, failures, any operating failures. Um, you can always try to reset the heater by turning power off and back on. Uh, beyond that, I would call for service at that time. Uh, if you guys have any questions or, or anything else, Chris um, covers it right. Uh, that's it.